Today, we're scanning a soda stream, which, as you can see, I forgot at home. And Daryl's giving me a pretty hard time about it. Let's get it into the machine. It was lying around at the house, and I'm kind of curious how it works. We're not going to have a history lesson here. These popped up, I mean, mid-2010s, I think. They let you take tap water, turn it into sparkling water. They're great. There's a whole bunch of different brands, but this is the one I have. Let's take a look inside. All right, let's see how a soda stream works. <laughs> oh God, I'm actually tearing up. That was a rough one. <laughs> we understand the basic principle. You put in a bottle of cold water, you press the button, it shoots carbon dioxide into it. It maintains it at a little bit of pressure and the carbon dioxide dissolves in, you get carbonated water. What's going on inside of here? First things first, how are we actually getting a seal onto the bottle? Because all you have to do is push it in and then twist this back and in doing so, it draws the bottle up into the system. Well, we have a pretty clean view of this thing. So let's strip away the plastic and see what we can find. So what we're finding is that it's all plastic. So first things first, this right here is our big old bottle of compressed CO2. Nothing really special about it, but it does have a release valve at the top. And I'm starting to get the impression that they've done everything in their power to prevent high pressures from ever being in the actual mechanical device here like I don't think anything else except this bottle needs to actually see bottled co2 pressures now the reason I'm thinking that is because everything else in here is plastic <laughs> maybe a bit of aluminum around the neck of the bottle let's take a look down along the bed yeah so we have a lever arm that appears to just impinge on the head of the bottle now just from the get-go I'd like to point out that I made a mistake in setting up this scan and forgot to remove the part during the setup. So we're gonna see some peculiar artifacting uh, forming radial patterns in the noise, but that's okay. I think we can still make out what's going on here. There isn't a single metal part in this that isn't like a, a pivot or a spring or a screw. From the top down we have our button, button forms a lever, the lever pushes down on a plastic pin, the plastic pin pushes down on the valve on the top of the CO2 cartridge, and I could have sworn that when you put in the CO2 cartridge, there's a hiss, but you know what? There isn't. It just goes right in. I want to be critical of them for this decision, but it's cheap, it's simple, and it's safe, and it still works fine. So, I don't know, uh, it's fine. It really is just totally fine. And it's, it's pretty freaking clever too. So all I need to have is an O-ring seal right here, digging into that groove in the neck of the CO2 bottle. And once you have that, there we go. So this whole assembly seals over the top and provides a single point of egress for compressed air. So fluid can come up here, down here, out here. Now, we have a metal ball in the middle of this, and I'm curious now, is that some piece of plumbing that I'm failing to recognize, or is that a check ball? Now, why would they want to have a check ball there? Well, it would be to prevent liquid from getting back into the cylinder, and it really does look like it's a like it's just a check ball. Strange. So yeah, we have airflow coming out of this plastic assembly into this check ball, goes past there, goes into a tube, tube comes around here, has a threaded fitting onto the, let's call it the front assembly. Everything that isn't directly contacting the air cylinder is, well, the front assembly, kind of past here. 
This is where we're actually interacting with the bottle of water rather than the bottle of compressed CO2. So here we start doing some strange and peculiar things. But what we can see is a seal that's actually going to bite into the head of the bottle and push out from the outside so that as you fill it with compressed gas, it actually gets tighter and tighter against the walls of that ceiling face. That's good design. That'll make it a lot easier to hold pressure in here. Now we also have these claws on the outside and these are currently shown in their engaged state. But as you rock this metal tab back and forth, and by metal, I mean polycarbonate, as you rock this tab back and forth, it's actually changing how engaged these claws are by slipping this collar up and down and allowing them to spring out or pull in, which is pretty good. So now we have a bottle sealed onto here, and I probably should have loaded the bottle in here for the scan, but I forgot to. So now, the final step is that air can make it through this spigot, blast out the end of this tube, which has a tiny, tiny little orifice in it. Uh, unfortunately, I cut off this region of interest a little too high. But we have a tiny, tiny orifice. The air gets jetted through that. You get a high velocity jet that pierces into the water and bubbles the whole darn thing. Cool. You keep pressing the button and eventually you get that of a pressure release firing. I want to know, where's the pressure release? Now, wild guess, I'm seeing a lot of springs and a pressure release is probably going to have a spring. So we need to investigate this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. These two seem to be in some sort of pair. There's some sort of couplet going there. So let's do those first, I suppose. Uh, we'll look at this from a cardinal plane again. And it was behind and ahead of this main frame. And no. What this spring is doing, that's providing the force that pushes these two halves away from one another so that this tab can be spring-loaded. So that rules out those two springs. There's your other one. Now that one, two. Now these two are still looking pretty pressure relief. So let's take a look. That y-axis cross-section is gonna work pretty well here again. Now, it is just kind of floating here from this perspective. So first of all, how is this actually connecting to our output cylinder? And well, here we are. We have this thing, this spigot, attached to the top of our cylinder, and we have orifices passing out the left and out the right, right here. Here And right in that pink spot, we have orifices passing to the left and the right to both of these assemblies. So my expectation is that one of these is going to be the service pressure relief, which is what you're expecting to fire when you're most of the time when you're using this thing. And the other one is going to be an emergency pressure relief that keeps everything from exploding if the other one fails. So there's actually a new feature in Lumafield Voyager that I want to try out, and that is that we can take one of these cardinal axis slices and convert it to a full resolution image. Okay, um, okay, I'm kind of blown away at how much resolution there is available here. Like, we're seeing structure that we could not have fathomed before. So, we know that our compressed air is going to be coming into this gallery right here, and there appears to be a valve formed by this pin, which is spring-loaded this way, hitting this seat right here. So that forms a seal, normally. This end is capped off in some capacity. Compressed air builds up in here, and above a certain pressure, the preload on this spring will cease to be able to hold this forward. And instead, gas will be able to leak out through here, down the middle of this, and out of the system, relieving pressure. So that's our one release valve. And on the other side of the system, we have our second release valve. So here, we're actually seeing multiple forms of safety valve built into one, which is pretty cool. So I think this is the emergency pressure relief. So we know that our pressure is coming in around this gallery. And I believe that it's actually ported all the way down its length. Our first line of defense, which by which I mean our last line of defense, is we actually have this tiny little membrane. Now this is actually a thin little layer of, I don't know, metal or plastic, which is sandwiched against this threaded end cap. And what that does is if this pressure reaches a certain amount and pushes too hard on that membrane, it explodes. And by explodes, I mean it ruptures, it breaks, and it allows all of the gas out irrecoverably. This system cannot reset if this burst disc bursts. That's good, we, we want that. But that doesn't really explain why we have this massive spring in here. Okay, I'm getting to phone a friend. Hey Bogdan. Okay, here's my operating theory. We have our burst disc here, but then crucially, what we also have is this entire stem, this entire interior part is spring-loaded by this coil spring 
against the tube that it's all sitting in with its threaded end that is retaining the spring. This spring is preloaded so that when we reach a certain pressure, this entire stem is gonna move down and out and that's gonna create a leakage path through the spring and out this hole. Now I'm not certain that's right. So first of all, if you guys think you know what's going on here, please let me know down in the comments. I'd love to actually understand this. And if you wanna dig in yourself, you can check out the scan on Lumafield Voyager using the link down in the description below. Now, if I've got that, that's the end of the video and I appreciate you guys sticking around, but if we don't, Bogdan's gonna be in here in a moment giving his thoughts on how this valve works. Hi, welcome to the set. Wanna crouch down a little bit? <laughs> Good chair. Can you see me? Yeah. For those of you who don't know, this is Bogdan. He does engineering over on Hacksmith. Here's the challenge, man. So, soda stream. We have this pressure relief valve that's okay. attached to a stem that goes directly into the inside of the actual pressurizing cylinder here, right? The, the bottle. It tees off through this port, ends up in this thing. Got a big old spring. We have a burst disc here. Is that a burst disc or a diaphragm? Uh, it's a burst disc, I think, because these two, these two halves are oh, yeah, threaded in. together. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out how this thing works. Now, we do have some scan quality issues because I've made a mistake. I think there's a bore down this whole thing. I think it might be cross-drilled, but I can't say for certain. So my operating theory is this entire stem can move along this axis, and it's preloaded this way by this coil spring. And then the seal for the spring-loaded pressure relief is here. And then you have a fallback for our fallback here. Mm. Can you see any other way this thing could work? Do we have a 3D? Um, yeah, here, we can... Yeah, so it looks like this is drilled into the side there. Yeah, yeah, it is. It definitely winds up in the housing. I think that the, the spindle down the middle is cross-drilled so that air can flow into the axis of it. 15 minutes later. I think I just figured out this... The back face of this mm -hmm. is exposed because that would work as an actuator. A plunger? A plunger, yeah. So if this swings around, and it does when you move the whole thing in and out, that hits... That's it. That's why it's so fucked up. It's because this hits this face uh, when you swing the bottle out. Uh, and then dumps the pressure as the bottle's opening. So yeah. This is on this, this whole thing moves back. This is one single piece. Yeah, oh, yeah. So this hits that, that pushes that back, and then... Okay. I still don't, I still don't know where the ceiling face is, though. That's I, what I'm trying to figure out. This kind of this kind of makes me actually extra confident that it is right in there. here. Yeah. I don't know. I'm still not, not certain about that. Because the thing is, if this was a flat face ceiling face, and this was your outlet, then now your pressure is perpendicular with your ceiling face. So now you're actually putting pressure directly into the side face of the gasket which would, by pressure, relieve that. Which could be what you want if this is a pressurized uh, relief. But if it's I mean, a yeah. pressurized relief. I mean, both of these have... And how do they assemble this? Like, if this is right here as a single plunger, they slide this no, cap there's over a, it. There's a threaded retainer for the spring on the plunger. On this guy? Yeah, here, mind if I? So if we go over to Cardinal Y, threaded spring retainer. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. So, okay, yeah, so if that's, if this is actually a manually actuated pressure relief, yep. except s both of them are manually actuated pressure reliefs with different designs, mm -hmm. whack, okay. <laughs> and this one's also an emergency pressure relief. But they really don't want this thing to blow up in your house. Yeah, yeah, well, it looks like they've done a great job of making this, this thing really unlikely to explode in your face, which, I think, I think we can all agree is a good thing. Now, if you want to take a crack at solving the mystery of the pressure relief valve, you can actually check out the, this exact scan in Lumafield Voyager using the link in the description below. Cool. And if you think our argument wasn't good enough, well, leave a comment to that effect and we can debate this endlessly. <laughs> we probably just cut 20 minutes of this. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Tune in next week. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave us a like. And if you want to see inside of something, leave a comment with your suggestion. If you want to support the channel, share this video with a friend or check out hacksmith.store. And if you want to see inside of everything, get subscribed.